My name is Sal Erder Yakli, and I'm 84 years old. Um, being a superager is something to brag about, you know. My name is Ralph Raybach. I am 89 years old, and I'm very proud to be a superager. I want the world to understand that aging is not always bad. Aging can be not just good, it can be super. Super agers are the paradigm of the idea that good aging is a biological possibility. It's hopeful for me. I have a family history of Alzheimer's disease. Many of us here have family histories of neurodegenerative disease. Sometimes we say it's me search instead of research. It drives a lot of our hard work and dedication. It's not just about our participants and our friends. It's our family. It's, it's everyone around us. It's ourselves. And super aging gives hope. So super agers are defined according to their memory. These individuals are all over 80 years old, but they have the memory capacity of individuals who are in their 50s and 60s, sometimes even younger than that. I was born during an earthquake in Istanbul, Turkey, 84 years ago. I really think the fact that I speak two languages does make a big difference. I think that keeps you kind of sharp. And another thing is I have always been energetic and I've always been interested in doing new things and extra things. Who knows if that's the reason, but it could have been inherited from my parents, I don't know. Part of the superaging study requires that we follow these individuals cognitively. So we give them tests of memory and language and executive functioning. We also collect their blood every year, and that's really powerful if we're trying to find a biomarker for successful aging. We also image them, so we take structural pictures of their brains year after year until they pass away, and many of them commit to donating their brains at death. I am in this very unique position where I'm able to study these superagers during life, and then I'm offered this incredible opportunity to study their brains post-mortem. The findings from those studies, to me, are the most incredible. For example, we found in one study that the neurons of superagers are extremely plump. They're bigger, they're healthier than their cognitively normal, same-aged peers. And that's really powerful. Down the line, what we need to do is understand at the neuronal level what makes those neurons special, why are they resilient to disease, how they communicate with other cells. Is it perhaps enhancing efficient processing of information? Who knows? But we're working very systematically to answer all those questions. The job entails working with life and death. So it's also a study of humanity. It's a study of my connection with people, how I view aging, time, human life, human death. These are principles that are, for some people, faith-based, but I see it every day in my job at Northwestern. That's really incredible. I was born in Gotha, Germany in 1934. Hitler had just come to power and that changed our lives dramatically from that time forward. I feel that telling stories that I tell about my background is so important because we as Holocaust survivors need to have our stories, at least in essence, remembered. I think that many of them are emotionally resilient. I think they're able to bounce back from hardship. I feel a sense of comfort that if someone can go through what, what they went through and come out like them, my God, there's a chance to have a great life, to live a long, full, meaningful life despite hardship. Isn't that, in a way, the goal? I also feel personally indebted and responsible for safeguarding the brains themselves. 
because my feeling is that if there is a cure to Alzheimer's disease, if there is a cure to neurodegeneration, it's somewhere lying in those brains. So there's a sense of immortality in brain donation. Um, and there's a sense also of overwhelming respect because this is their most precious donation.